over bells fall, a thrill shall rise We're back to start tales in Hickman's eyes A haunted realm where shadows creep And horror's depths run dark and deep From films of fear they twist the night To chill the soul to freeze the light With haunted halls and ghostly seas Dreadworks awakens in eerie Welcome to the show, everybody. That was our AI-generated intro song. Uh, that was I liked it, actually, except for the vocals. I think they're a little bit off. But, you know, like, welcome Same to the show. show. We have Ken Honigman and Alexander J. Baxter from Dreadworks, a premier uh, haunted you. house destination in Vancouver. We are going to talk to them this evening about everything involved with running a haunted house attraction, how you get started, uh, everything they have to deal with, the good stories, the bad stories, and even uh, let's start off. Hey guys, welcome to the show. We are having technical difficulties this evening, by the way. Uh, I think the show is haunted. That's not a setup, uh, but we have been bouncing in and out. So as we get going, <laughs> uh, whoever wants to speak up first, Alexander, I think you have a slightly better connection. If uh, how are you doing today? It seems like I'm in a dead zone here, not getting anything, guys. Um, having a rough internet night here, I think across the board. It's a it's a rough one. Ken, how about you? Can you hear us? Are, are you are you? Uh, how you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I hear now. I hear that, but a lot of I don't. So uh, I'm going to have that deer in the head confused look. So bear okay. with me. Well, we are definitely going to bear with you. Uh, let's hope. Uh, <laughs> let's hope it gets going. Let's go. It gets going. Um, let's start with first off. Um, if you can hear me, if we're getting into that, uh, I just want to. Is, is there a way you could? Uh, I think uh, Alexander is going to be back. He jumped off and on uh, previously, and that seemed to fix things up. Ken, um, if you can hear yes. me, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got up to Dreadworks? My background. Okay, I heard I heard most of that. Just the end, I didn't hear. So hopefully, that's what I heard. Is uh, uh, God, I've um, we've run me and my partner uh, Lilia. We both love Halloween, and our background started off as a house party and just grew and grew. And um, we've have a home haunted house called Amor Manor Haunted House, and it has won many awards throughout Canada. And in the last couple of years, we've won uh, best haunted house, home haunted house in North America. So um, we do have a video out there. It's it's crazy over over the top. It's very theater um, movie set quality. Uh, it, it takes us three months to build. Um, so wow. that's what we've done. Yeah, we do it for um, for charity. It's for the food bank. We run it for five awesome. nights. And last year we were over eighteen thousand dollars that we donated to the food bank. Um, so this is our final year doing that one because now I'm part of uh, been approached and uh, had a great conversation with Alexander, and he's got the same kind of concepts and ideas as I do with making it very um very visual um not just having you know simple uh scenes but very intense right. um reset quality very immersive uh um scenes so that's what uh that's how we got along and it, we hit it off and and here we go that's awesome. I, uh, I myself, I love Halloween. I got married on Halloween. I have the yearly party because nobody could touch my holiday. I got married on it. It's mine. Uh, and I actually worked in a haunted house uh, when I was a teenager. So we have a lot to talk about here. And the haunted house that I worked at was also a volunteer. And it was for uh, the local fire hall near where I grew up. And I know you are a uh, volunteer fireman, correct? That I am, yes. So I, I like how everything wraps up like that. That's awesome. Alexander, how did you get all the way up to Dreadworks? I know you've done some uh, films. You've worked uh, on television film, Zoe's playlist, Extraordinary Playlist, uh, with, by the way, two of our former guests uh, have had parts on there, Ildiko Suzani and Evan Rain, and also When the Heart Calls. You've been a little bit everywhere, including uh, Man in the High Castle. You did a bit on there. So 
Yeah. How did you get the Dreadworks? Well, so I'm trying to find a place in the haunted house that has the best lighting. Um, well, it kind of, it's a lot, a bit of a long story in that sense. Uh, I kind of began my journey in the haunted house world over at the Scariest Corn Maze, which is a large uh, haunted house venue here in the Valley. I did film and TV for quite a few years. There we go. Um, That's great. Yeah. 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 And so I did film and TV for quite a few years, uh, went the acting route, the production assistant route, the producer route, the director route, and then just kind of weirdly fell in as an acting coach over at the Scariest Corn Maze and that transitioned to creative director for four or five years. And then, yeah, this January, a bunch of us kind of decided that we wanted to go and do our own thing. I partnered with Ken Honigman over here and then um, the Yonkman family in the Valley. And yeah, we just kind of built a, what we would call something very cinematic. And we wanted to bring like film quality horror and production design sets to the um, haunted attraction industry. Ah, oh, man. Uh, thank you for that, by the way. I, uh, I, I had this question later down on the list, but in your mind, what's the difference between an average or even a bad haunted attraction versus a great one or one that stands out or delivers something else? What, what are those differences? What sets you apart? You know, uh, one of the biggest things that I think sets us apart is um, time, especially from a consumer perspective, is something that I feel like a lot of uh, haunts take advantage of. In some ways, you have very short experiences with extremely long waits, and it kind of feels like you spend your entire evening standing still just to get 10 minutes of fear. So one thing that we wanted to kind of establish here is a 40 minute long haunted house. And so our, our experience is genuinely something that takes you for 40 minutes. And the reason why 40 minutes is that, yeah, it's a cool little timestamp, but when you get past a certain point, you kind of forget where you are. You forget what time it is. You forget when you entered and where, and exactly where you're standing in the grand That's scheme of things. And so beautiful. we Psychology, often have a lot like... of guests. Yeah. We have them leave genuinely like confuses how long was I in there for? And from Perfect. an imagination perspective, you can almost play with people's perceptions of what's happening around them more so because they forget that it's not, that it's, that, that it's not real, which is kind of what's neat about this. Nice. Nice. So what are some things that you, uh, you're trying to frighten people, I, I'm assuming in every manner possible, be it auditory, visual, uh, you know, uh, I went through a haunted uh, maze once that got smaller and smaller as you went, like everything that they could throw at you. But what are some things that you don't do that go too far or might be too triggering that you, like you actively say, we don't do this? We're not. Is there some things? Yeah, no. We're, okay, like, yeah. We're, we, like, there is there is there are themes of like blood and gore, but it's when, when I was um, more involved in the film industry, I still am to some to a lot of it. Uh, I, I still am in many ways. But one thing I never quite enjoy about the horror industry is that a lot of people think that horror just means blood and gore. It means overwhelming, shock you, traumatize you. And I think one thing that we've done really successfully here at Dreadworks is we've avoided nudity. We've avoided over overt amounts of gore and blood and, and, and grossness. And right. By also doing a scare band thing, by coming in, you choose your scare band. It's a colored scare necklace that pretty much allows you to tailor the experience to what you're comfortable with. Can, it, I ask, it, you're, can you tell us about those bands a little bit? And then I'm, I don't mean to interrupt yeah. you. I want to know about those bands. I think it's key to some of what you're doing here. Yeah, yeah. The bands, it was it was an early idea way back when I was um, kind of in between the scariest core maze and here. Before this kind of got off the ground, I kind of was wondering what kind of haunt I wanted to kind of put together and who I wanted to bring together to do it. And I found that you can't really create a haunted house for everybody if you're just kind of doing what most haunted houses do, just having the basic one shoe fits all. So we designed this approach with scare bands, which is a colored necklace. It's green, yellow, and red. Tailoring the experience okay. to you, giving the actors a highly visual cue to tell them how to react and, and so on and so forth. So green means go. They can touch you. They can separate you. They can, they can feed you. The, the works, it's, it's, it's fully immersive. Uh, yellow is traditional haunted house. It's, you know, you get your jump scares. You get all that fun stuff. And then red is 
I don't want to be scared. I don't want to be touched. So the actors know that if someone comes in as red, they know to avoid them. And that person is there just to experience the atmosphere, the cinematic production design, and the costumes and the cool makeup. Well, they don't usually like the makeup because it's scary. Um, but it kind of it, it allows us to give a kind of almost a veil of safety to some guests who may have previously found haunted houses too scary. In that sense, I that's guess. awesome. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It's like the kitty ride in any amusement park. Like there's rides that people can ride that aren't gonna push your limits. Exactly. And everybody can exactly. enjoy it. That's, that's great. Yeah. Um, I uh, so I, I interrupted you when I was going with that. Uh, what sets your your uh, your haunted attraction apart? I think we were on that topic, right? Um, yeah. Not R rated. No nudity. Forty minutes. Uh, and then the bracelets. And I, if, if there was another thing, I interrupted you, and I apologize. <laughs> No, no, it's, it's, I mean, I wouldn't say this makes us unique in the grand scheme of the industry, but definitely out here, one thing that we noticed that everyone's trying to do as well that we're, that we're focusing on is story. Uh, a lot of us are big world builders. I'm a, I'm a big old nerd. I'm, 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 I'm a D&D, I'm a Star Trek, I'm a, I'm a Lord of the Rings freak. And so when I kind of went into You're this... Speaking my language. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, believe me, everything has a like reason. Like the green reason why there's green lights is because green is the color of fear and it's terror right, which is extracting essence from humans. Like everything in here is like a big world build world builders kind of wet dream in a lot of ways. Nice. And I think that's what we really do well at is sticking to story and building up worlds in here. And like we even have like posters that we've designed in the factory, like Dread Tech Soda, where it's like monsters selling brands as though they were living in the factory. And there's a poster of this soda pop company in the world that monsters might drink. And it's it's stuff like that that we're trying to do to make it more of a fully it. fleshed out world. So is there, uh, and this could be for Ken or you, uh, I don't want to have Ken just sit in the background if, if he has an answer for this too. Is there a gestalt story every that, that every room is wrapped in or most every room is wrapped in with Dreadworks this year? And does it change yearly if there is? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll let Ken hop off, hop onto this as well. But I'm definitely like Mr. Story, Story, Story. Um, we do have an overarching narrative of this, this world of dreams and nightmares where all nightmares are made. The Dreadworks is a factory that kind of keeps... I would say the nightmarish entities at bay, channeling them into almost a workforce so that they don't go into the humans work like human realm. So okay. we have a kind of a dark comedic approach to that where the swamp thing is the janitor named Bob in the factory and he's just working the job so he can pay he can pay his bills and feed his tadpoles. Like it's just there's there's a there's a there's a hinge of darkness to this that's still comedic but then what we kind of excel with is that every year a different monster or a different entity might escape and because our green nightmare energy is highly like radioactive we call it it mutates parts of the factory so it allows us to kind of like the area leading up to our nightmare steamboat willy narratives transitions black and white as you get closer to it almost like it's oh. the world around it i love it i love it yeah I lo that's that's uh uh ken yeah, no, I, I'll just uh, add to that is that uh, the factory is is its own entity and every room is a different nightmare. So that allows you to change that part every year so that instead of that door that you open to go into, say, Steamboat Willie, next time you go into a door and it could be, you know, um, another fear or another nightmare that you've had, you know, so it allows you to always be creative. Um, and still continue with um, following the story. I love it. I love it. Uh, I've never seen uh, enough of a story in the haunted houses I've been to. In fact, um, I was lucky enough whenever I did it as a youth, I was able to do two rooms. So I actually made my story bleed into the next one. So it made sense as people left the room, but no other rooms did that. And it was, it was, it was, I don't know. I just, I like the story. I like the world building and I'm glad you guys are doing that because I think that's really what takes people along. Cause everybody, you know, the, the experience, usually we wait in line, we go inside and then it's just jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. And we see some cool stuff and the people that yeah. go above and beyond definitely uh, deserve, you know, to be uh, visited and, and explored because that's the ones you want to go back to. And I think if you ever want to go back, then they've done something right. I do have a question though for both of you as well. Does the chainsaw gag still work? 